Hello farmers. Did you know that in terms of production, the difference in broiler breeds account for up to 30%? What does this mean? This means that success in broiler farming is 30% dependent on the breed that you choose to keep in your farm and the other 70% is dependent on how you manage your birds. In today's video, I want to capitalize and concentrate on this 30%. I am going to give you proven data and information that will help you make a choice on the best broiler breed to keep in your farm so that you can get the best profits when you go to sell it in the market. I am going to discuss the growth parameters of three of the most prominent broiler breeds that is the COP 500, the Ross 308 and the Aba Acre breed. I am going to give you the differences in their daily weight gain, the feed intake and also in the feed conversion ratio and uh, I am also going to look into the total weight gain. Uh, over a certain period of time in between the three broiler, broiler breeds and the carcass characteristics. Uh, these are uh, the characteristics that are looked into so that now you, we can say that this meat is of uh, the required quality. This will help you make an informed decision on the best broiler breed to keep in your farm. Make sure that you watch the whole video so that you can be able to get all the information. Please, please, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button. We just hit 50,000 subscribers and now we are focusing on hitting 100,000 uh, uh, subscribers on this channel. Let us engage in the comment section below. If you have any suggestion or question or any advice uh, that you would have to us or even to farmers, uh, that will help a lot. Also, make sure that you hit that uh, like button. Uh, someone may ask, and why wonder about the differences in the breeds? Why should I choose one breed and leave the other? You see, in broiler production, we look for the additional plus one difference because in production, a higher edge can make a huge impact. For example, if one breed can gain a quarter kg over the other, then in a big flock, this is equal to a lot of money. For example, in simple mathematics, if you are able to get 250 gram extra per bird, this means that this will add up to 1 kg per 4 birds. And in a 200 birds, this adds up to an extra 20 kg. And that is the power of the slight differences that may seem insignificant, but actually make a big difference when compounded. I will start by comparing the Ross 308 and the Cobb 500. The Ross 308 was created by the Ross breeders from the United Kingdom. And all the Cobb 500 were created by the Cobb breeding company from the UK also. So what I am looking specifically in this video is about the growth rate, the feed intake, the feed conversion ratio, and also the most important thing, and that is the weight gain. In this in this table, I want to discuss the difference in the weight gain between the Ross 308 and the Cobb 500. And in day one, as you can see on our first column, we have the days, and the other column, we have the differences in the, the weight gain up to the 42nd day. And at day, day one, you see that the Cobb 500 was leading with, with an extra 0 0.02 grams. And at day seven, the difference between the weight of the Cobb 500 chicks and that of the Ross 308 increased to 8.21 and it keeps on increasing. At the 42nd day, the Cobb 500 was able to gain 78.56 gram more than the Ross 308. And another thing is that the difference in the final weight between the Ross 308 the Cobb, and the Cobb 500 was about 100 grams and this was in favor of the Cobb 500. And what does this mean? This means that the Cobb 500 has a faster growth, uh, growth performance or growth rate than the Ross 308. Let's now look, look at the growth, the, uh, the growth uh, performance parameters. On the first column, you can see there's the specification. On the other column, there's the Ross 308 and the Cobb 500. The initial body weight gain, you see the Cobb 500 leads. And for the final body weight gain, you can see that uh, the Ross 308 have 2.2 kg and the Cobb have 2.29 uh, 
kg therefore the cob 500 have a more edge this goes on the total weight gain the cob 500 reads also the average daily weight gain uh, the cob 500 also uh, leads in this uh, contest and also uh, 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 in the total feed the roast 500 eats more than the roast brew weight because it eats 4.15 kg compared to roast which eats 4.09 but i mean looking at there down there is the co feed conversion ratio and you can see that that of the cob 500 is lower meaning it is able to convert more feed into muscles therefore the additional feeds that we see here that the cob 500 is eating it it's able to be properly converted and it reflects in the final final body weight this study also found out that uh, the final weight decreased when these birds were reared in the cages and it they did better when they are when they were reared in the deep litter this is an indicator that broiler birds do well in the deep litter system uh, than in the cages but this is debatable uh, there's something very uh, interesting that i found in another study the study was comparing the growth performance between the ross and the cob 500 and the cob chicks had been in transit or uh, had been had been in transportation for more than 48 hours and this exposed these chicks to a lot of stress and dehydration and this led to low weight than the roast 308 chicks but by the second week the cob 500 chicks had bypassed at the roast 308 by weight therefore the cob 500 well, was able to deal with the stress this means that the cob 500 have a better weight gain than the the roast 308 another important thing about the broiler production is about the age at which the broilers are able to reach the market weight and at the market age that is about 42 days uh, roughly uh, the birds that uh, had attained the market weight when it comes to the Ross 308 uh, it was about 65.77 percent but for the cob 500 it was at 94.3 percent this means that the cob 500 is able to hit the market weight more earlier uh, than the Ross 308 so from this study uh, we, we can conclude that the cob 500 has better a growth growth rate better feed intake better feed conversion ratio and better at attaining the market weight on time than the ross 308 let us now look at the abba acre breed uh, versus the ross 308 uh, on our table you can see that we have the abba acre and the ross 308 as our breeds then you have the first uh, column having the weight gain there is the feed intake the feed conversion ratio and the mortality rate and if you look all through you will be able to see that the abba acre breed is better uh, than the ross 308 when it comes it has more weight it have a more feed intake the feed conversion ratio of the abayaka breed is lower than that of the ross 308 by far and this is evident of how abayaka breed can be able to turn the feed into muscle more efficiently than the ross 308 and of course the mortality is very important and we can see also the abba acre breed you know takes the win also like the other study the ross 308 chicks had more weight in the in the starter phase other than the abba acre chicks but as time went by the three uh, the upper acre breed chicks were able to bypass the ross 308 chicks by weight gain and this shows that also the upper acre breed have have better growth rate other uh, than the ross 308 breed another evaluation of the performance for the upper acre breed the cob 500 and the ross 308 the results were as follows and we can you can see that on our first column we have the breeds then there's the final weight gain the final weight and also the average daily gain and for the upper acre breed if you see uh, uh, if you look at the final weight you'll be able to see that the cob 500 still is able to lead uh, with quite some edge when it comes to the final weight and also in the average weight gain you can see that the cob 500 had a higher average uh, daily weight gain uh, more, uh, than the other two breeds and this is a good indicator that the cob 500 has the highest efficiency of converting you know the feeds into the muscles then followed by the upper acre and finally the three the ross 308 breed when it comes to the carcass characteristics and this is after slaughtering the three types of the breed it was found out that the, the ross 308 is able to produce bigger uh, carcass measurements than the other two breeds but when it comes to weight at uh, the cob 500 is more heavier this means that the measurements may be big but the density 
uh, by density or by that weight the cob 500 is able to lead so what is the conclusions that we can make uh, from the, all this information we can make uh, number one is that the cob 500 have better growth performance uh, than the that the upper acre and also the ross 308 uh, in terms of the feeds the cob 500 will eat uh, quite quite more amount of feeds but it's directly proportional to what we are seeing in the weight that is it is able due to its ability to, con to convert uh, the the feeds into muscles we can see the effect of this additional uh, feed and that is it is it reflects in the weight and number three is that in terms of reaching the market weight, the COP500 will attain our market weight, ma the market weight quite earlier than the Aba Acre and the Ross 308. But uh, in the terms of the, uh, the the growth performance, we have seen that the Aba Acre and the COP500 are very close uh, compared to the Ross 308, which comes last. The most important thing to note is that the differences in the broiler breed only accounts for 30 percent as far as production is concerned therefore the other 70 percent is dependent on how you are going to manage your birds dependent on how you are going to uh, feed your chicks how you are going to brood them how you are going to em uh, employ the disease control measures how you are going to feed them are you going to feed them at the libitum or are you going to starve them and all these factors counter in therefore the ball is now on your side to decide what a breed you want to keep in your farm make sure that you hit the video on your screen right now so that you can be able to know how to boost the production of your broilers by using the pineapple leaf meal